So good evening. I, I feel bad for our friends online because they missed the first half hour of our exclusive content that's available only to the live audience. And uh, you're always welcome to join us here live at the Torch Center every Monday night at 7 o'clock, rain or shine. Um, actually, next week we won't have class because it's going to be the, fir the second night of, of Sukkot. And the following week, we're not either going to have class because that's going to be uh, the first night of uh, the second night of Simchat Torah. So hopefully we look forward to seeing everyone back here in three weeks. Uh, but it's with great joy that we're here tonight, uh, the night before Yom Kippur, tomorrow night, less than 24 hours from now, we will be in our synagogues, each one respectively, uh, hearing how our, our words uh, sometimes uh, are different than our intentions and how we, we, we want to make sure that our words and our intentions are the same and we do kol nidres, all our vows and all of our oaths and all of our, all of our words that we may have said in, disingenuously should be uh, erased and, and, uh, and removed. So we're here um, studying the teachings of Ramchal as we do every week and we're in the fifth chapter and it's actually the final, uh, final chapter of uh, Vigilance, and we're on page 100 on top. Do you have a copy over there? Okay, good. Page 100. So, till now, Ramchal was saying that well, someone who is blinded uh, and doesn't want to, to, to uh, understand, um, the Yetzahara will bury him, so to speak, in, with distraction, and, uh, and, and the person will not be able to find the truth, he will not be able to see it, uh, even though it'll, it's right in front of him. Ramchal explains how Torah, right, if so, that's obviously if someone's distant from Torah, so that's what could happen. But, so Ramchal explains how Torah study acts as an antidote to the evil inclination. Ach, im Torah, however, if one involves himself in Torah study, that means not only, it's very interesting, when we say a blessing in the morning, uh, on, on studying Torah, the words we use is la asok Torah, to be immersed in. You know, you know what esek means. Esek means a business. Someone who's in business, someone who's uh, selling cars, right? So all day he's thinking about you know buying cars, selling cars. You know, so even if he's not at the office, right? Is he selling cars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's thinking about it. He's you know, he's he's always busy with it. That's esek. Torah study does it, is not is not, you know, when I'm sitting in the Torah center and learning, then I'm then it's Torah, right? No, no, no. A sector is like a business. We have to be thinking Torah all the time. La sokba there's a dira Torah. We want to be involved and immersed in Torah study wherever we are, at all times, not just when we're sitting in front of a book. So he says over here, Ach imu osikba Torah. However, if one involves himself in Torah study, immerses himself in Torah study, biro todra chel tzivu yeh. Now when he sees the wisdom of its ways, its commandments, and its warnings, he ne sof sof me lavit chadesh bo hitorut. In due course, there will automatically be kindled within him a spirit of inspiration. It's impossible for a person to learn Torah and not be inspired. It's impossible. Shiviyo derachatov, and that will bring him to the proper path. And this is what our sages of blessed memory meant when they said, Halavai oti azvu vitorati shamaru. Hashem says, Would that they had left me behind, but still observed my Torah. Leave me, but at least keep my Torah. What does that mean? It's in, in a way, it's like a, you, can't, you can't do one with the other, right? You can't do one because the Torah is, in essence, the will of Hashem. It is the it is the the, the connection with Hashem. or for the divine light that is within the Torah returns a person to the proper path. Right. So what? So if we even if one word, God forbid, to leave the Almighty, to leave Hashem. Hashem says, you want to leave me? Fine. But don't, at least keep my Torah. Right? At least connect with my Torah. Which, what does that mean? Don't leave me. 
Well, well, obviously, don't leave me, but the Torah, some, some people can look at the Torah as being, well, it's intellectually stimulating, which is not why we should learn it. Right. It's brilliant, which is not why we should learn it. <coughs> it's, it's, it's truth, which is not why we should learn it. You learn it because the Almighty commanded us to learn it. Right? Having explained that Torah study in general is a prerequisite for the attainment of spirituality, Ramchal returns to the subject of zihirut, which is vigilance and explains how Torah study facilitates attainment of this trait. Torah study facilitates the attainment of this trait. Now, included in this requirement to set aside time to study Torah, which we mentioned last week, is that not only to learn Torah and to study Torah, but to have a set time every single day for the study of Torah, even if it's just five minutes. Have a set time which is unshakable, unbreakable, un, uh, un, un, uh, disturbed, uninterrupted. <laughs> is also the setting aside, aside for setting aside the study of Torah, setting aside time, it is also setting aside the time of times for an accounting of one's deeds and how they can be corrected. For this is the essence of Zahirus. Zahirus means to be watchful, to be careful. Right? If we don't look after our ways, if we don't look after our actions, then we don't know what to be careful of. We don't know, right? We don't, we don't, essentially, we don't really know what we're doing. Right? If we take an accounting of our day, yesterday, so you start thinking, well, I probably could have done that a little bit better. I could have been nicer to that person. I could have been more patient to that one. I could have been more kind. I could have been more giving. Right? I could have been more, uh, more humble. I could have been less arrogant. I do all of these different. I could have, I could have uh, been more patient and gotten less angry. Just think of the things that go on. But if a person doesn't evaluate and go over it again, then what happens? Do the same thing. We'll do the same thing. Make the same mistake again. exactly, exactly like they did in the past. As I have written above, umilvad But even aside for all this, the time designated for Torah study and introspection, kol mashi shara lo Whatever free time remains for a person from his business matters, im If he is a wise person, he will certainly not waste it. <laughs> Rather, he will immediately seize upon the free time and not let it go. When a person has free time, it shouldn't be a time, well, now I'm just going to sit back and relax. No, unless they need it for the service of Hashem, obviously. No, on the contrary. I have an opportunity to study. I have an opportunity to learn more. I have an opportunity to grow more. I have, I have an opportunity to finish another track date, to, to learn more of my daily dose of Torah, whatever it is that a person is learning. A person has that opportunity. And use it to engage in the affairs of his soul and to improve of his divine service. So if someone does take this opportunity to... Uh, to um, evaluate his ways so then he realizes you know what I wasted some time last week I shouldn't have done that or I, I went uh, I, I went to a place I shouldn't have gone I said something I shouldn't have said etc etc and these are things that, that, that only if a person has introspection appropriately and takes the time to review their day so not only the study of Torah we mentioned the Ramchal tells us here Right, the study of Torah, great. It's amazing. We have, to, we have to dedicate a set time. Again, it doesn't have to be your whole day. Right, we're busy. We have jobs. We have, we, have, we, have, we have things we need to take care of. But a set time for, for the study of Torah. Even if it's from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 or 3 in the morning. Those are three minutes dedicated to my study of Torah. Rabbi, get, yes, sure. So, you're... You're commanded to go th three times a day to serve, to, to, to uh, study Torah. Correct. Right? No, to, to pray. To pray. Here's yeah. my question. 
It's the same prayers every day you go. Yeah. Right? So what changes for you when you go to prayer? It's no, no, no. Nothing no. changes? No, 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 no. God forbid. Okay. Great question, though. Okay. When a person goes to prayer, what is prayer? Prayer is not saying the words that are in your prayer book. That's just a springboard. Okay. You're using that. It's like a diving board. You think to yourself, a song. They're diving the same dive every single time. I mean, they're doing this a thousand times, right? right. And why do they dive? No, every time is different because it's just a board that I'm going to jump off to make a somersault, to make a flip, to make a this or that, right? To make a cannonball, whatever it is, right? That's our, that's what we what we derive from it, right? But the springboard is is to help us bring out our own personal. Uh, uh, our own personal twist. Mm -hmm. Prayer, the way it was designated by our sages, excuse me, um, the way it was, it was, it was, it was a cre a, a, a put together by our the men of the Great Assembly was to touch all of the points necessary for us to receive heavenly mercy. To, to, to make, to, to get a good judgment from the Almighty. And all of us have our separate... But there's another part of prayer, which is each of us praying our own personal okay. prayers, okay. each one of us asking our own personal requests, right? Each one of us talking from our hearts. It says that Ezohi Abudasha Belev, what is the service of the heart? Havi Omer Zehu Tfilah. Talmud says, you know what that is? You know what the service of the heart is? Prayer. It's not just reading words. That anybody can do. What prayer really is, is talking with our heart. Talking with our heart is really connecting what is it that I, that I want, that I need, that I'm challenged with, that I need assistance with, that, that I want to thank Hashem for. Right? Prayer is not only asking for things, it's also thanking for things. Mm -hmm. I remember once I had a cab driver in Israel, uh, you know, you know who runs the country in Israel, right? The cab, driver. the cab drivers, right? <laughs> so, if, you know, they they say that one of the peace accords, the Israeli Prime Minister and the American President, they said, you know, we need to go back and I need to go back and talk to my people. So the, the President said, um, I need to bring it back to the Congress. The Congress has to vote on this on this peace accord. And then uh, the Prime Minister says, you just have to go to Congress. He says, me? By me, every cab driver is a Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> so. Right. So, so it's 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 a whole different story, but either way, <clears throat> we have um, where 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 where, where, where do we where do we leave off here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So prayer. prayer. So what prayer really is 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 to come from the heart. Exactly, it's the service of the heart. It's the service of the heart. You want to know what service of the heart is? It's prayer. What's the service of the mind? Torah study. Okay, so prayer is the heart, Torah study is the mind. Well, they're both, they, they both should be both, okay. right? But, but that's the idea. The idea is that if a person is not there, is it prayer or is it just reading from a book? Yeah, that's why I don't understand why some people rush through the Amidah. You're exactly right. right. No, 100%. Like the Brucha, yeah, the Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so fast, like... Do you notice? You when, yeah, let's hurry. That's up terrible. That is that is terrible. Do you notice when the kids all come back from the yeshivas that they go to as younger kids? They come back and they start leading the service. I don't know what they do there, but they do it so fast, like they're going through it like this instead right. of really. It's it's it's, a, it's no question. That's a big challenge. It is, especially for someone who grows up in a religious home. I, it's a very difficult thing because yeah. you've been saying these prayers so many hundreds and hundreds of times before you're eight years old, right? By the time you're 13 years old and you have your bar mitzvah, you've said it probably two, three, th four thousand times. Same exact prayer over and over again. Now you have to work on the, on the, on the quality, not only the quantity. Yes. You may know how to pray. You may know <coughs> what to say. It's but only a channel of communication. Exactly, you your exactly. And it's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. When you say the same words again and again, it's very difficult for you to channel your, your thoughts and emotions through those same words that you've been saying for hundreds and hundreds of times. Right? It's like 
the fir- we mentioned this before the past uh, recently, right? When someone uh, the first time they say I love you, right, to their to their significant other, right? It's a whole thing. Like, you got to prepare yourself. You got to just like get ready. You have to you have to be ready to say this, right? It's like you plan it out, and you like you know it's like okay, today might be the day. I might say I love you, right? And you're get, getting ready for it, right? What happens five years later? You said I love you about twenty five thousand times, right? Hopefully. Hopefully, you know this. This the couple once came to to, to the uh, to the rabbi, and, and the wife says, you know, my husband doesn't love me anymore. I want a divorce. So the husband's looking, he's totally so shocked, he's surprised. So the rabbi's like, uh, yeah, maybe we'll talk about this privately. So he sits with the wife, and she says, he doesn't say I love you. He hasn't said I love you in, in six years. You know, it's like it's crazy. So, um, so the rabbi goes to the to the husband, and he says to the husband. His wife says, you haven't said I love you in, in six years. She, she thinks you don't love her, and she wants she wants out. He says, what are you talking about? He says, I told her when we got married, I love you, and if anything changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> right? Right. Obviously, that doesn't work. Right? Obviously, no relationship. Approach. No, it's not a good approach at all. Right? Um, it's a terrible thing, right? A person has to say I love you, and you have to say s- express your appreciation, particularly to the Almighty and especially to your spouse. Right, uh, go, good luck being happily married without having said that um, the way the, the way it should. It's funny because you mentioned Shtisel before, right? So he he says at one point he says, uh, "You think I told your mother I, I love you, right?" <laughs> right? From the right. So, um, but um, but the truth is is that um, yes, it should be said. It's like golden teviot. Right. It's right. See, it it should be said, and it should be, it should be with not being said. It should be felt. It should it should be an expression. It should be an emotion. It should be a passion that's behind it, and not just words. Not implied. And not implied for sure. So this is these are things which are very very fundamental, and this is this are things that could very easily be overlooked. Uh, sadly, they could be overlooked um, too easily by our, by our. Um, in our world that we're living in, we, we take things for granted, right? How many times, uh, okay, here, anybody here ever get a new car? Yes, because we're all driving cars, right? I assume that you got it, at some point it was new to you, right? And you imagine the first time you get it, it's like, wow, this is pretty nice, right? It's, 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 really, it's a really nice car, it's like, it's comfortable, and really grateful, <laughs> thank you, Hashem, thank you, thank you so much, right? And then, how long does that last for? About a day. A day, a two day, days, day. three days, maybe a week, a maybe a month, Right, and after the month, it's like, uh, is that is that the new one? Is that the new one? I, maybe I should have waited a month. Maybe I should, right? Right. This is crazy, right? So that's what that's what we're, we're when we're talking about a proper prayer. Proper prayer means to feel that connection, not to just say the words. Saying the words, anyone can say the words. It's not about saying the words. It's not about puppetry. It's about real connection, deep connection. So, so now, back to Torah study. Whatever free time remains for a person from his business matters, if he is wise, he will certainly not waste it, not waste that time that he has available. Rather, he will immediately seize upon the free time and not let it go. And use it to engage in the affairs of his soul and the improvement of his divine service. So a person needs to really take the take the opportunity and take the 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 um, the the privilege of studying Torah of time that they have in using it. Um, to engage in the affairs of the soul and the improvement of our service to Hashem. Now, Hal concludes his discussion of the first factor that detracts from Zihirus, by, by, of watchfulness and vigilance, uh, by contrasting it with the other two. Vizeh Hamaf said, the undermining factor, preoccupation of worldly matters, Although it is the most prevalent of the three, it is nevertheless the easiest of the three to avoid, 
the one who truly wishes to escape from it. So if someone wants to escape from this, it's very, very easy. It's very easy for someone to, to break away from this, um, this detractor. It's not so difficult. It's pretty easy for us to do. Right, level two, level three is a little bit more difficult for us to, to overcome, but still something which is certainly within our reach. Okay, so we, we, don't, we don't have that much more till the end of the fifth chapter, but I think it's worthwhile to hear it's the end of, the, of a section. So we'll stop here on top of page 102. And even though this was a shorter class for the online crowd, I apologize, my dear friends, but hopefully you'll join us in person next time and you'll be able to enjoy the exclusive content as well, which is only for those who are here in the classroom. I just want to remind everyone that we have the Musser podcast channel on iTunes uh, podcast, on Google podcast, and all the other pl podcast platforms. And please uh, subscribe to it and uh, get the notifications. And as soon as we post a uh, podcast, you will be able to, to listen to it even if you're not in the class. If you are in the class, you'll be able to review it with the podcast. Either way, to my dear friends, thank you so much for joining us. I want to wish everyone a Gemar Hatimatova. We know it says that we are inscribed in the book in Rosh Hashanah, but sealed in the book on Yom Kippur. And my prayer and blessing to all of you is that we should be sealed and all of the students of Torch, and all the supporters, and all the friends of Torch, and all the rabbis and their families of Torch, is that we all be inscribed and sealed in the in most incredible year ahead, in the Book of Life, uh, a year that's filled with, with good, good, good fortune, uh, with good news, with good health, with good prosperity and success, and most of all, good connection with the Almighty. So, amen. So, uh, with that, my friends, thank you very much. Shana Tova, Gemar Chatima Tova. And I look forward to celebrating back here. We are going to have some events, which I look forward to seeing you all in my sukkah, one of the days of Sukkot. We're going to be sending out the information, hopefully, either right before Yom Kippur or right after Yom Kippur. But I really look forward to having everyone there at the sukkah. It's going to be really fabulous. So, shalom, my friends. And Shana Tova, Gemar Chatima Tova.